probably one of the wildest lenses that I've used in a long time. So it is a 100 millimeter f2.8 that also has macro capabilities with a reproduction ratio of one to one. Now, that's not particularly wild, but it's just a little over three inches or about 7.5 centimeters in length. It weighs only 298 grams and the external size does not change throughout the entire focusing range. Oh, and it has really good autofocus with dual actuators and it supports five axis image stabilization with native cameras. And it's priced very reasonably at just under $1,000 US. This lens should not exist. Well, it does. And this is the new Panasonic Lumix S 100 millimeter F 2.8 macro, a very good and well-rounded lens that performs as a more than capable short telephoto but it also functions as a full one-to-one -one macro lens. The Lumix 100 millimeter fills a gap in the Panasonic lineup and it, even really within L mount, because up to this point, we've only had a 100 millimeter or a 105 millimeter lens from Sigma. So this is something that's much needed. Now, what makes this dramatically cool is the size of this. And this is something that I want to compare real quick. So I'll take it off the camera. This is the 100 millimeter macro, and you can see that it's the same size as the 35 millimeter. In fact, Panasonic with the S lineup used the same case housing for all of the lenses, which keeps the weight and the size very consistent. In fact, one of the things you're not going to be able to see on here because it's a weight issue, the 100 millimeter is actually lighter than the 85 millimeter. So I've actually been using this lens for the last few weeks and to say that I'm impressed is pretty much an understatement. I can really tell the team at Lumix worked really hard on this one because it packs in some really interesting features and that's what I wanna share with you in this video. And what you're going to see is that for this size and this weight and even this price point, Honestly, I'm serious. This lens really shouldn't exist. This is a huge home run for Lumix. So first of all, forget that it's a macro lens for just a second. Let's just look at this as a short telephoto lens. I could say that it gives excellent sharpness edge to edge. The contrast is extremely well controlled. There's very little issue with ghosting or flaring. This is a modern lens and it performs as such. And much like the other Lumix S lenses, focus breathing is impressively controlled. In fact, this is a really impressive feature throughout their lineup that I don't think gets talked about enough. If you do video or if you do macro shooting, as you're gonna see in a second, this is really important. But if we look at this lens as a macro lens, this is where it really gets impressive to me. So just to talk about some of the terminology for those of you who may not shoot macro, you're not familiar, we call this a one-to-one -one reproduction ratio, which is essentially life size. At the closest focusing distance, when you get in on something, it means it's going to pretty much be the same size is the sensor that you're projecting onto. So this is a true one-to-one. -one. So I'm going to use this to illustrate these as a point of comparison because this is not the same mount, but this is the lens that I generally use for macro. It is a one-to-one -one reproduction. This is the Voigtlander 110 millimeter f2.5 Apolanthar lens. And you're going to notice that, you know, they are kind of comparable here if we get the lens caps off and judge for the mount. However, I want to show you something. This is at infinity. As soon as I start close focusing with this, it takes a little while, the lens more than doubles in size when you focus for closest focusing, whereas now you can see this one always stays the same size. So there is an incredible size difference if you are shooting macro. There's also a major weight difference in these two lenses. Now to also be fair, the Voigtlander is a manual focus lens, which you probably noticed when I was twisting this. The throw in the focus is more than 360 degrees. And actually it's very well designed because if you're gonna use this as a standard 110 millimeter lens, your focus throw from let's say one millimeter to infinity is just right there. It's not that bad. So they give you all of this throw as you're going in to the closest focusing range. Now, why would they do that? Well, when you're dealing with macro photography, you're dealing with a very shallow depth of field. So even though this says 2.5 or in the Panasonic case, 2.8, when you're up that close to something, the depth of field is just paper thin. And so critical focusing is an issue. And when you're doing, getting into things like focus stacking and whatnot, this is something that's very important. So in Voigtlander's defense, that actually is a very good feature of this lens being manual focus. However, the Lumix is autofocus and this makes working so much faster when you're dealing with macro. The other thing, even if you're working on a tripod and you're trying to get really specific with your composition and such, this lens just makes it faster because of the size. And another thing is focus breathing. I talked about that earlier. As much as I love the Voigtlander, it does breathe. It is very intense, the focus breathing. In fact, so much at 110 millimeters. A lot of times if you're shooting something critical, like you're shooting a watch or even coins or something like that, something that's really small, as soon as you get in focus, you realize that it's breathed so much, you actually have to change your composition. So you've got to compensate by moving the camera out and in. It's just very difficult. With this lens, that is not a problem at all. And if you're getting into things like focus stacking, 
if you have more breathing, it just is going to end up having to crop the composition in the end when you go into the stacking software because the composition changes. And so this is why I think this lens is really outstanding in that regard. So another nice thing about having redesigned autofocus motors is the way that this camera handles the focus by wire mechanism when you're actually in manual focus. So focus by wire is the terminology that we use for pretty much all modern lenses. And because the focusing elements move on a linear system, on a real system that is electromagnetic, it's really the only way we can focus a lens in modern camera design. So the downside of this though is a lot of times you'll turn the focus color if you're in manual focus and it doesn't really feel like a manual focus lens at all. Well, that's kind of changed with these new motors. In fact, one of the things that I want to show you, and most people don't even know this exists. So if you go in the menus under the gear icon, and if we go all the way to the bottom, you'll see the little lens icon. If we go to the third option down, it is focus ring control. There are three options in here. Non-linear, I'm not a big fan of. That feels like focus by wire. Linear is supposed to pretty much emulate the way you would feel if you were manually focusing a lens. But what's really cool about Panasonic is the third option is to set that linear response. When you click set, it's going to give you all of the options for the degree degrees of rotation. So 90 degrees would be a quarter rotation on the lens for the entire focus range. And if I scroll all the way down, we can get this way past 360. In fact, we can go all the way up to 1080 degrees. Now this in itself is not that impressive because this is just software based, but in most lens designs, if you crank it up that high, when you turn the collar, you're actually going to see it stutter because it's not able to get a granularity down to that level. This lens does not. It actually feels like a manual focus lens. In fact, when I compare this with the Voigtlander, which is why I've been using that because it is manual focus, it's pretty much identical. It is really shocking how good this is. In fact, I think this is a big step up in the whole feel of a focus by wire system. It's supposed to emulate what you would have on a manual focus lens, and I've never felt on any camera system it really has. That's kind of changed with the Panasonic S5 II now combined with this lens. Oh, and another nice touch that Lumix has done with this lens. So just to compare, this is the 35 millimeter f1.8, and you're going to see that we have the branding and the labeling on the front of the lens, and it's printed in white text. On the 100 millimeter, this is grayed out. Now, this is actually very cool because a lot of times when you're close up, you will get reflections from the lens in the object that you're dealing with. And so it's nice that they've darkened that down. It also works with filters. Sometimes you'll get a reflection in there. So it's a really nice touch on there. Another thing that I want to stress about this lens, which makes it so impressive to me, is the size really is impressive. With all things in lens design, there comes a trade-off. And so it's like anything in photography. If you want to gain in one area, you're probably going to have to give up in another. So it could be as basic is like if you want more light in the lens, if I open up the aperture, I'm going to have to speed up the shutter or vice versa. So there's always a trade-off. It's no different with lens design. And there's a couple things that have made it very interesting because like I said, this lens probably shouldn't exist. There is nothing else like it. This small, this lightweight. And there's a couple things that the Panasonic Lumix design team have done really well to actually make this happen. So one of these things is using aspherical elements. Now typically aspherical elements are harder to make and so therefore a lot of times they will improve the optics in the lens theoretically. A lot of lenses we'll use one, maybe two, sometimes more. Well, this one has three. And mind you, this lens comes in at under $1,000. Another thing that's key to this design and keeping the size down is we have two moving focus groups instead of one. So with the double focus system, it uses two groups. This actually creates an issue, which is the focusing motors themselves. We want a lens that autofocuses very fast, very efficiently, and very accurately. So what's really cool is Panasonic has actually designed an all new autofocusing design. So on the subgroup, the lens is using a new stepping motor. And then on the main group, we have a newly designed, what they're calling a dual phase linear motor actuator. What this allows us to do is get two to three times the speed of a conventional linear motor. So when you consider the elements moving in a lens, a linear motor basically is a rail system. So there's no turning parts. It's not rotational and it moves the elements one way or the other. It uses magnets to do this. What's also interesting is they've redesigned this as well. They call this a dual face magnet. It's going to use magnets on both sides of the coil, which gives you more power and speed. And Panasonic are even stating that this will move much larger elements elements than this lens has. So in terms of alternative macro lenses, and this is why I think this is a really nice addition to this system, there really aren't very many. So the Voigtlander, I was using that just for example purposes here. This is actually Sony E-mount. Voigtlander are making this and some other mounts as well. They're not part of the L-mount alliance. I don't know if they would do one very soon on that, so I'm going to leave this one out. But however, for autofocusing, the only other alternative for L-mount would be that Sigma 105. And the trade-off there is it is a much larger and much heavier lens, and I think this one's really impressive. When you get get into much larger and much heavier. I think another side of that coin is how fast is going to be the autofocus. Leica really haven't done anything with macro up to this point. There's some zoom lenses that do one to two reproduction, but this is going to be your best bet if you want to do close-ups. So I've obviously been very impressed with this lens. In fact, the day that I got it in the mail, I got it on the way home from the office one day. 
and I didn't put it down the entire night I was shooting with it. It's just really amazing because I'm used to shooting macro and it's a much more involved situation where you've got tripods, you've got much heavier lenses, critical focus is a big deal. I talked about recomposing when you have a lot of focus breathing. None of those issues exist with this. This is by far the best macro lens that I've ever used and that's why I think it's such a boon for Panasonic system. I would love to know what you guys think as well. So drop me a comment below. I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, later.